Well, welcome uh, to Allen's Day. This is going to be part one of Upgrade to Perfect on this 2005 Holiday Rambler made by Monaco. Uh, this unit here, I got it several years ago and I've been working on it and I'm still in work in progress. Uh, part one is going to be mostly about the coolant system and what I've done to upgrade that and uh, things that uh, you should be looking out for. So I will uh, walk you over and show you what we got going for the coolant system here. So the upgrades I've been doing on the coolant system here is working on replacing the radiator. The radiator that these units come with are a, an aluminum with plastic cores on the end, or um, tanks on the end. Those are just a temporary radiator. Uh, those need to be replaced as soon as possible if you happen to get one of these, uh, these older units. Like I said, it's a 2005. Uh, so it's, it's getting a little age on there. So what I've done is, uh, it's been going in phases here. And the first phase of this project was pulling out the radiator. Here, let me uh, turn some lights on. I've got a, this is an upgrade I'll show you later on about how to light up your engine bay. Um, but what we've got going on in here is uh, I pulled out the radiator out of the back of this, back of this unit here. And in doing so, I found some areas that need to be taken care of. And a couple of the areas that I needed to take care of in here, as long as I was in here, is this uh, hose that goes over to the surge tank. These surge tanks that come in here, they start out with a plastic tank. So this is an upgrade I did uh, a couple years ago. I put this in here. Uh, but Keep an eye on that hose will only last this unit about 10 years and they need to be replaced. Now that I got a good quality hose in here, it's probably going to last a little longer. Uh, a couple other things to uh, look at in here if you've got this radiator out is the water pump. This is the water pump right here. This is just uh, cheap insurance to change out this water pump. It's a couple of bolts, um, but make sure you get the correct one. There's so many different versions of water pumps that can go in this unit here. And when you're ordering parts for this unit, this is a 5.9 Cummings. Uh, you need to be real careful. It is, some of the parts are interchangeable with the pickup trucks, 5.9 Cummings, but this is a different motor in here. This particular, these motors are what they're called more of an industrial motor um, in here. So this is what we've got in there, it's a, I don't know if you can see that, it's an ISB 300 horsepower Cummings that's in this particular unit here. Um, so, just make sure when you're ordering parts on here, you're probably better off going right to the uh, Cummings dealer and to get the parts, because if you're ordering parts offline from one of the outfits, uh, haven't had any luck. They just look up in the book, they sell you some parts, and you're sending a lot of stuff back. Um, now, once I was in here, a couple other things that are cheap insurance to change out is right here you've got a crank sensor, and then you've got a cam sensor. Uh, I changed those out as long as I was in here because they're hard to get at when you're not in here. Um, also, I had some problems with the with the um, oil pressure in here, buzzer going off. Uh, there's buzzers on these units here that uh, will come on if you've got uh, low oil pressure, uh, coolant temperatures high, low coolant, and if your alternator. So the same buzzer beeps for everything. So I was having problems uh, on the last trip with the uh, oil pressure buzzer going off. So uh, in this housing here is oil pump. So 
So since I had the radiator out, that was a good time to change the oil pump. Except that started getting a little involved. The reason being is you need to get the harmonic balancer off of here and take these six bolts out and pop this off here. Well, the, on the old one, the harmonic balancer was somewhat seized on this shaft here. So after I pulled it off of there, it was bent a little bit. So after a trip to Cummings, and I think it was $1,100 later, they gave me a, didn't give me, ended up buying a new um, harmonic balancer and changing out the bolts. And also while I was in here, I changed out the pulley in the back. The other one was a little pitted up, the serpentine pulley. Uh, changed that out. Um, last time I was in here, I changed out the belt tensioner um, in here. And then some of the small things you need to look at in here. There's a little, little hose in here. Well, it had a little age on there. Well, it's got 18 years on there now. And at just to the point where you can see it's weather checked a little bit. So I went to the Cummings dealer and for that little piece of rubber hose, uh, I think they wanted, I think I paid them 35 bucks for it. Don't chance, don't try to cob something else in there. Buy the hose from Cummings, put the hose in there. And when you do so, buy some different clamps. Um, I'll show you those a little bit later on, uh, what to do with those. Um, also with the uh, coolant system while I was in here, I put a filter, coolant filter in here. And that coolant filter, you can just barely see it, oh, or maybe you can't see it. Um, right up in here is the coolant filter. And that didn't come with the unit, but it's something that you need to put on there to keep the uh, all the extra floaters out of your coolant system uh, to protect your radiator. And I'll show you that radiator in a little bit, then you'll You'll understand why you need to protect the radiator in there. Well, let's take a walk over and I will uh, show you the radiator. Well, Taz is going to follow me. He's my, uh, he's the garage cat. He's helping me all the time. So in here is where we have the new radiator that's going in here. Now this radiator here uh, you can see right here, here is part number and everything for it. This radiator is a real wide radiator. So like I was saying, when these units, they first come with the aluminum radiator with the plastic tanks. Uh, like I said, those are just temporary. They're probably good if you're just on flat land uh, and not pulling anything. But the big reason I got to do all the upgrades on this is I pull a um, trailer with it. I've got a 20-foot uh, horse trailer that I put sometimes up to uh, four horses in there. So I'm up to probably about 10,000 pounds is what I'm pulling. And that's when it shows up the faults in your coolant system. So the radiator that I put in there two years ago, I have it boxed up in here. It's not that radiator, but I just box it all up and it was a narrower radiator. And I paid for that radiator that I just took out of there, I paid $2,600 for it. This new radiator, which is a wider core right here, uh, this radiator was $5,600. But if you look at the big picture there, uh, what would it cost being broken down thousand miles away and having to have the unit towed back if you didn't blow your motor up. So much as I hated to do it, had to pay up and get the uh, best radiator I could get in here. And I got this from, um, that was from those people, uh, their radiator supply house, called them up, talked through, and then they got me set up. So real good outfit to work with, uh, just a little price on the radiator. but. In order to put the wider radiator in here, I had to make a new base for it. The old base in here is 
this one right here. You can see how narrow, narrow this one is because it was just the factory radiator and also the replacement radiator that you typically buy off the shelf for these units are the narrow ones. I had to go over the wide ones. So what I did is I took and I drew this whole thing up in CAD, burnt it out on the plasma table and bent it up at the shop uh, and put it, uh, got it ready so I can put it in there. And also what I did is I moved this radiator back approximately away from the radiator or away from the fan about three quarters of an inch. It was just getting a little bit closer than what I wanted to in there so I was able to fine tune it at that time. Now a little bit more of what I've done is changed out the fan. And what else we got going on here? Oh, uh, the next upgrade I did, and I'm work, it's a work in progress, is the, I am putting a system in here for spraying water onto the intercooler and the radiator because they're stacked on top of each other. So I, this is the housing that came with the factory housing here. What I did is I drilled some holes in here and I put some stainless steel couplers, quarter inch pipe couplers here, here, and here. So I've got four of them in there. So these, these two bottom ones are going to spray water on the radiator. These two upper ones are going to spray water on the intercooler. And to test my theory if this was going to work, last year before a trip, I just got this cheap sprinkler line hose and I just drilled some holes in the housing and I wire tied this sprinkler hose on there. And I'll have to show you that later. And on the inside the cab, right next to my seat, I've got a momentary switch that if I'm climbing a hill, uh, I just literally reach my hand over, push on the button, and then I spray water on the radiator while I'm driving down the road. I mean, I've got 50 gallons of fresh water sitting in the tank there. Uh, might as well put it to use. So showing it experimental. Uh, what I'm doing on here. I may have to play with the nozzle sizes, but what I've got is I've got a sprinkler nozzle right here. Those four sprinkler nozzles are going to screw inside of that jet right inside of there, and then that is going to spray water. I'll show you once I... Well, we're back. We've got the uh, coolant lines or the water spray lines on the shroud here. So this will all be on the inside of the engine bay. All these lines all the way through here. And then this will hook up to the main pull uh, hook into the solenoid and switch to uh, pump water in here. And just uh, full disclosure this idea of spraying water on the radiator and the intercooler uh, it's nothing I came up with. I just happened to watch a episode of Road Garage. I'm just fine-tuning their operation. I thought it was pretty slick and it worked out. So I will get this uh, finished plumbing this up right here. And uh, the next phase is going to be uh, dropping in the mount and then getting the radiator and the intercooler stacked and on top of one another. But before I do that, I can't forget to put the, uh, put the fan on there. And one other thing with this fan here is... Um, the bolts that came on the motor were just a standard bolt with a flat washer on there. I uh, found and sourced the, a, a flanged bolt and it's about a quarter inch longer so I can get a little bit more thread depth on that fan house. And also what I've got to put on there, I use this on the uh, threads, just a little bit of this uh, Fibatec um, helps with uh, bolts not loosening up. You don't need much, put it on there and just torque the bolts down lightly. 
because that fan's going to be coming off and on throughout the life of this uh, unit here. Reason being is, in order to change out the AC belt on there, you have to pull the fan off. So, uh, new bolts. And I will show you uh, another phase of the project here. One other thing with the cooling system upgrade on here is there's some louvers on the bottom side here and I know when it's running normally there's some pretty hot air coming out of there so what I did is I went on the inside here and I put some fans in there I've got three fans set up in there with a switch on the dash so that if I notice that the cooling temperature is raising up between flipping the switch on getting these fans pumping that air out of the unit and also uh, pushing my uh, momentary switch for spraying the cold water on the radiator and intercooler I should be set and pulling a trailer I want to take get every advantage I can so that I don't have any problems with uh, overheating and uh, cook the motor out of there one other thing I did on there this was on the last trip I was getting I could feel that these housings were warm back here so I stopped the Menards about a thousand miles away and I uh, drilled a couple holes in here that way the air is flowing out and through and there's one other area that I've got to talk about what I've done on here to get the air flowing through the system here and what I did, if you look underneath, yeah, you'll see a bunch of other stuff that I've done under here. We'll go through that later with some uh, some guarding. Uh, just put this on here. This is a transmission cooler, and that'll also help the radiator stay cooler. If you're not trying, if you don't have hot transmission fluid going through the system. Uh, one other thing I did on here is I put an air dam. This is a piece of aluminum. Let me get you in here. This is a piece of aluminum. There's the back, the back wheels there and right there. And you can see that there's an opportunity here when the air comes into the under the coach here what it's doing is well it's blowing all the way under the coach system that I came up with and what happens is when the air comes underneath the coach um, I wanted to divert it to go up over the top of the motor and through the radiator so I put this air dam in here I uh, just formed up a piece of aluminum well, this is the end of part one of Allen's Day Upgrade to Perfect. Uh, working on a 2005 Holiday Rambler. And a couple things we went through on here is the uh, cooling system. Uh, also, how we're going to keep this thing cool for the next venture that we're going on, which is going to be in a probably about uh, six weeks. We got about a 3,000 mile trip we got to take this on, so I'll let you know how that went. Uh, also, on part two, we are going to go through a few other items, and that's actually doing the install and putting the radiator in here. And in doing so, I'm going to show you how we went. Uh, originally, the first time I took the radiator out, it probably took me about uh, six hours. Uh, this last time I took the radiator out, Took me about 45 minutes or an hour, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did that the factory didn't do on uh, able to make it possible to pull that radiator out uh, efficiently. So, uh, thank you very much for coming along with me. Part two will be out, and that's going to involve the transmission cooler a little bit on that. Um, how I have the water plumbed. Uh, going on to the uh, spray system on there and just continue doing our walk around on this. So once again, thank you. We will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching Alan's Day. Life is about making choices. 
Some things are already perfect. Some things you may choose to upgrade. This channel will show you both. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again.